If you are a booth rental salon, you need an income account to record income you receive from your booth renters. In this video, I'm going to show you the best way to set up this account using the products and services feature. Now, the reason I like using the services and the products feature is because it gives you the ability to really drill down when you're creating reports. And the more detailed reports you're able to create gives you the ability to analyze your business for decision-making purposes. So let's start out by creating a booth rental income account. So in this scenario, let's assume that you have three booth renters in your salon. So you want to create a income account for each booth renter. Now I like to break it down by each individual booth renter. That way you can see how much each person paid you over a period of time, or if each stylist needs to receive a copy of all the rent she's paid you over a period of time, you can segregate it by the individual stylist and print the report separately. So the first place you need to be is at your chart of accounts. And the way, so let's assume you're at the dashboard. Now you're going to click on accounting and here is your chart of accounts. So you want to pick new because you're adding a brand new account to your chart of accounts. This is going to be an income account. So the income type is going to be income or revenue, whichever one. So in this case, it's going to be income. Now the detailed type is asking you what type of income account is this going to be? So it is going to be a services account. Okay, now let me say this. With the detailed type, no matter what you pick, if you decide you want to change the heading of this account, you can go under name and you can change it. So this means that within your chart of accounts and when, when you print reports, whatever name is under here is what's going to show up. So in that case, the detailed type becomes null and void. You won't see this anywhere. Okay, so we are creating a booth rental account for income. So you're gonna type booth, booth rent. and then we are going to go ahead and save it. Now, when you save it, because I'm going to add some sub accounts and the sub accounts are going to be each stylist that you have that pays you booth rent. So let's click on save and new, because we're going to add something. All right, so we're gonna go back under account types and we're going to click on income again. And over here, we're going to type the booth renter's name. So we're gonna say Susan. Hall. Susan Hall is going to be the sub account of the income account, account, which was the booth rental account. So we're going to click on, is this a sub account? And then click the arrow and we need to find the booth rental account. So we can just type it in here and here we have it, booth rent. And that's what you want to pick. And then save and new. We're going to do the exact same thing for the other booth renters. The next one is Mary. We'll just give all of them the same last name. So we'll say Mary Hall. We want to click on the down arrow, add her as a sub account under booth rent. Okay, so we're done with that. We're going to click save and new. Now that account is part of our chart of accounts. Now the next step is to set up the products and services. Once we set up the products and services, we're going to map them to the, account, to the accounts that we just created in the chart of accounts. So to set up products and services, you want to click on sales, products and services, and then new. So when you enter the products and services screen, you're going to have four options, inventory, non-inventory, services, and bundle. So a bundle means if you sell something, let's say you have three or four different products and you bundle them together. And when you bundle them together, you charge a particular fee. So this is great if say you're, you're doing some kind of promotion and if you're bundling some type of retail products with hair services, or you're just bundling a bunch of hair services, you can use you can use the bundle option to create that bundle and then to attach a price to it. Now, in this case, we're going to use the services tab. So click on services. So now it's asking us for a name. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in booth rent 
and we're going to attach the booth renter's name to this particular service. So we'll say Susan. Okay, so we don't have to include a category for this particular setup. And then it says sales information. It says, I sell this product slash service to my customers. So you, you're gonna make sure that this is checked. And then it's asking for a description. So the description basically is just booth, um, weekly booth rent or however you charge. If you do it monthly, you can say monthly booth rent, but most people charge by the week. So we'll just say weekly booth rent. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're gonna come down here and under, under the income account, we're going to pick Susan under booth rental. So we're going to look for booth rental. So that's the account that we just created in the chart of accounts. Or we could just type it in. So here it is, Susan Hall. We're gonna click on Susan. And then whatever we charge Susan on, on a weekly basis. So let's assume that we charge Susan 250 a week for booth rent. Now you're gonna you're gonna key in the amount, and that's 250. And let's just save and close, or rather save and new. And then we'll add one more. This one is going to be let's see booth rent. And this one is Mary. Once again, make sure that the checkbox is, is ticked and then weekly booth rent. How much you charge Mary, that's 250. And let's make sure that we pick the correct income account to map this to. And that will be Mary Hall. And that's it. We'll click on save now we're going to just save and close it. So now we've set up our income accounts for Mary and Susan. So now let's create a transaction so we can actually see how this works. So let's assume that Mary and Susan paid their booth rent at the end of the week. So you want to provide them with a sales receipt for payments of the booth rent. So we're going to go to sales and then we'll click on all sales, new transaction, sales receipt. So now we're going to create the sales receipt for Susan. Now Susan has not yet been inputted as a customer in our database. So we're going to go ahead and add her, Susan Hall. We'll add Susan. And Susan is a new customer. So we'll click save. So now she's in. You can also include her email address, that way all of her receipts go directly to her email. But in this case, let's just concentrate on creating the actual sales receipt. Okay, so let's see. Method of payment, let's assume they're paying you cash. If they're paying you cash, you can click on cash. If they're paying you check, then you can, you can choose check. Product and service. This is going to be Susan Hall. So booth rent for Susan, as you can see, the description automatically pops up, weekly booth rent, and the, the dollar amount that you charge Susan also automatically, automatically pops up. Then we're going to click save and new, so we can create another invoice for Mary. Let's add Mary as a customer, save it. And as you can see, everything populated. And now we're going to save and close. Once all the transactions have been entered, this is how it appears on your profit and loss statement, showing how much each booth renter has paid in rent year to date. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel.